Well, first thing you need is a raspberry. Nope. No, we're not using any type of small little microcomputer because it just won't get the job done. Before we jump into things, if there is some subject you'd like to see covered or have questions about Unraid or something that maybe we just don't cover in the previous videos and this one as well, definitely leave us a comment down below. I'd like to hear what everybody's doing and see what we can help out with their server because basically everyone will benefit from that. And in this video, there's going to be several different sections and some of them you may not want or you don't apply to you but as always there will be all the chapter marks down below and you can just jump to whatever your needs are and while we're at it we'll just go ahead and do the housekeeping here i do appreciate all the patreon subscribers definitely helps bring new videos to the channel all the time thank you and maybe you should join do all the things smash all the buttons that youtube likes and do the deal and let's get on with it already yeah you talk too much so in part two, we did show you how to set up Home Assistant Core without using the supervisor. And yeah, it's probably good for some people to start off with the supervisor, but it's time to just, once you move on and you kind of stabilize things, time to take those training wheels off. And I know you might be thinking, well, in this whole Docker GUI Unraid thing, yeah, it is, but it's, not really going to get in the way of how you use things like the supervisor does. And there's different things from whether the Zigbee to MQTT, like some of the different things I can't do in there that I want to do because of supervisor, same thing for frigate. But I do understand some people want to run that supervisor and you can do that with Unraid. Do I recommend it? No. I don't because it's just another layer of something on your home automation system. It makes things a little easier to configure for people starting out because it's like just so much to understand and try to grasp at one time. So I do get it. But time, hey, if you can really go through here and just connect your own apps and let, you know, this GUI manage it and you be the supervisor, you just have that better experience and you can control things. And well, quite frankly, you'll probably miss out on some different little issues possibly in the future. But with that said, let's go ahead and well, show you how to install that VM of Home Assistant where you'll put more Docker containers Inside the VM, you see the layer thing happening there. You've got a whole system with containers inside a virtual machine that you could just put them right here. Yeah, I'll get off my soapbox. I'm sorry. So the first thing is, is blank. Hey, I want to come in here and add a VM, right? What kind of VM do you want to add? You could add Windows 10 and Windows Server and Linux and the whole nine yards, right? Well, first we need to go get something. So we're going to start off, let's just say we'll do a Linux type of VM though. And we'll leave the CPU mode here and it's up to you on what, how many CPUs you want it to get. Well, I'm just going to let it eat. We'll give it four. Initial memory, depends on your system. Hey, let's go ahead and give it uh, say three gig of memory and we'll leave everything else the same. And this is where you need to go get a file from Home Assistant themselves. So we'll jump on over to Home Assistant IO and we'll go over to getting started. And we're gonna do installation and we'll come down here and look in the Linux one and you'll see it says for Home Assistant operating system. Now things can change with the documentation. They can get better, they can get worse. So you may change a little bit, but you're wanting to look for the VM images. And the one we want to look for is the KVM. It's going to have that QCAL2 extension on it. So go ahead and download that. So once that's downloaded, we do want to keep one thing in mind. 
you do want to keep this potentially on your cache drive. If you don't have it on your cache drive, well, it would live on the array and it would be slow to boot up and you would be waiting on that slow spinning drive. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and we could put it in another one of these shares, but why not just make some organization here? We're gonna say add share. We'll just call it VMS for VMs. And yes, we do wanna use the cache. We only want to use the cache. And we'll leave it the cache pool and we'll go ahead and hit add share. So once you've downloaded that QCAL file, you do need to extract it. I'll just go ahead and hit extract here and you'll see you get your Hass OS, whatever version it may be. Of course, that could change from time to time as they update things, but you want that, that QCAL2 file, not the one with the XZ on it. There's our VMS, and we'll paste that over here and get it onto our system. We wanna set the primary VDisk location. You'll set it to manual. Go ahead and click on the little folder here. And if you come down to user, VMs, pick that QCAL2 file. And for the VDisk bus, you will need to pick SATA. I'm not gonna pass in any USB devices right now. Say for instance, you were using say a Zigbee stick of some sort or um, Wise controller or Z-Wave. Of course, you'd wanna go ahead and pick your USB to pass in, or if you needed some type of PCI that need to be inside there, you could pass those in as well. And we'll go ahead and let it start the VM after we do create it. And you'll notice it automatically starts up, brings you right into the system, and Home Assistant should start right up. Now we'll give it a little bit depending on your system, and you should be able to type in root, now this is not the root password that you set on Unraid because you gotta think this VM has no idea you're running this on that subsystem of Unraid on your box. And right there, there you go. You should be able to see, hey, there's even the IP address. I can go start the system up, pull up my browser. And there we are with Home Assistant ready to go, the onboarding, everything right in there with your supervisor all contained in one. So one last thing I did want to show, because I did promise some folks to do this, is how to connect Node-RED and Home Assistant together. So first thing we need to do is go into Home Assistant itself, click on your little icon down here, and you do need to make sure that you are set to advanced mode. It's gonna unlock everything, and you do want to create a token. Now again, these are just test systems, so if you do feel like commenting down below and say, hey, you put your token on the YouTube, and hey, I do appreciate that sometimes, but these are all gonna be fake tokens, and I'll delete them anyway, even though it is a test system. So we have the access token. We'll leave this window up. Come back in here to Docker, and make sure it's started. We'll go to Node Red, and we'll go to Web UI. Now you may be wondering, well, where's the Home Assistant stuff? Now do remember this is just a regular Node-RED container. It's not gonna be, you know, it doesn't pertain just to people with just Home Assistant. So it's not set up for Home Assistant in mind. Now that's not saying you can't do that. You just click over here, click on, and hit Manage Palette, and hit Install, and we'll search for Home Assistant. And don't click the one that says four years ago. And you can usually pick out which one it is. And you can see we got the WebSocket one. It was updated three months ago. Go ahead and hit install on it. Hit install. And you should see it's going to add all these to your palette. And now here's all the stuff for Home Assistant. But we need to look at how do we connect it to Home Assistant itself. So if we look at current state, we'll just throw that one out there and go ahead and double click on it. You'll notice it's saying, hey, I need a server out here. So we'll go ahead and hit the little pencil. We'll leave it default. No, we're not using the add-on here. And the base URL is gonna be the exact URL that you do to get to Home Assistant itself. And you could use DNS, but that's a whole nother other thing. So let's go ahead and switch on over to our window over here. Grab the IP address. 
and paste it in. We will make sure we won't leave the slash. And then here's the token. So we'll make sure and click the token. I'm gonna use control A for select all. If you wanna use the mouse, make sure you do select it all. Control C for copy. I'm gonna hit okay. I can see my token is created. And I wanna come in here and put it as the access token. We'll paste it in here and then we'll go ahead and hit add. Now, if you do get an error message, it says can't get entities. Don't worry about that. It's nothing with your token stuff just yet. Don't freak out. Just hit done and go ahead and hit deploy. Hopefully it will accept it. So if we just go in here and go to current state, and if we look at entity ID, you should see now when you go ahead and type any type of letter or say binary sensor. Now we don't have many things in here, but I do actually see my user ID right here. So I know it is connected. And if I did add any light switches or whatever, entities would show up and now node red is connected. It's that simple, just throw in your token. Now you may be asking, well, what are some other cool plugins? I mean, I can really see the power of these plugins, right? So let's jump over to apps. And one I do want to show you is unassigned devices. We'll add that one. Another good one I like is fix common problems. Dynamix has a lot of different great apps out here. So if we look at Dynamix repository, some pretty cool stuff out here and definitely take a look at it. Maybe some stuff applies to you. Say we would like the system info out there and maybe the system temp. And some of these plugins that once you do install them, they may not pop up in the actual spot that you think under plugins. They actually will add additional options in various other pieces and parts of Unraid. Now you'll notice we have the infinity signal down here for the temperature. Well, if we go to two settings, and now you'll notice, see we have a lot of user utilities down here, is we have a system temp, and you will need to make sure and click detect. And well, there's one problem here, we need Perl. Well, how do you get Perl? Well, this starts to get down to a rabbit hole. So if you look at nerd pack, and we'll install this, we'll go to our plugins, and we'll jump into nerd tools, it's gonna pull all this information and let's take a look at Perl. Now there's other packages you can install. It's right here, pretty cool. So we'll hit for Perl and we'll say apply. It's gonna pull down and install Perl for you and it's gonna put it again, it's on that USB flash drive. So now we can come in here and go to settings and we'll go to system temp and now you can see that message is gone. We'll hit detect. And my particular system, it sees it as this core temp JC42. So we hit save. And then now we can see processor temperature. And I do have these, say the core temp package ID 093. Let's see main board, we'll give that one a shot. And you can also do the fan speed, it's up to you. We'll just say apply. And then now we get our temperatures down at the bottom. So if we missed something, forgot something, whatever, shoot us a comment down below, or maybe we're doing something wrong, you can definitely roast us down below and definitely hit like, dislike, whatever it may be, and y'all take care. It's how, how is there a big hole in the earth? <laughs> how is there a big hole in the earth? It just is. See? They're eating. They're not eating me. They're eating my dead skin. Don't worry. Cheese. Say cheese. Oh, okay. Cheese. Like this? Okay. Hey, mom, get in the picture. Say cheese. cheese.
scare the fish. It's gonna scare the fish and they jump in. It's gonna jump in. Come jump with me. Come jump with me. Then I'll come back and get you. No thanks. No thanks. No thanks. I'm okay. Can I throw you in? Yeah. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna watch you. I'm gonna watch you jump in. All right, okay, I'll go. Are you gonna ready? go underwater? Watch. What? No, I'm just, I'm just putting you over here. Hold your nose. Okay, sit in the middle between us two. Are you calling them? Come on, see. See? You were looking way down there? Mm -hmm.